As a young adult, I love the notion of a challenge, and I'm always eager to explore the unknown. Fascinated with medicine from a young age, I have dreamed about solving the world's biggest health problems and being a vanguard for the medicinal field. Interested in contributing to such a noble discipline, I researched the top-ranked, deadliest diseases facing mankind today, expecting to find cancer at the top of the list. What I found truly surprised me. According to leading health professionals, coronary artery disease was listed as the world's deadliest disease, leading to the mortality of over 7.4 million people worldwide. Reading about the worldwide destruction this disease had caused, I made it my mission to attempt to find a possible solution to this detriment, all while only in high school. I started by first learning all I could about coronary artery disease. Through my investigation, I found that coronary artery disease was characterized as an aging-related disease. Specifically, the more you age, the more susceptible you become to developing the illness, as the figure behind me showcases. This hit close to home, as it made me fear for the health of millions of individuals worldwide, who although are living longer, are experiencing more horrid and painful cardiovascular defects as a result. In addition to coronary artery disease, I also found that the adverse effects of chemotherapy comprise another major medical dilemma. This ailment has a profound personal connection with me, as for years, I witnessed the strife and struggle my grandmother went through during her battle with breast cancer. I'm sure we all know of a friend, a relative, or even a companion who has suffered from this deadly disease. Although chemotherapeutics can be highly efficient at targeting malignancies and wiping out cancer, the resulting side effects severely limits their effectiveness. With the administration of chemotherapy, there exists the paradox of, although it is possible to remove the malignancy, one may perish strictly due to the therapeutic in the first place. Sure, you may wipe out the cancer, but the drug may also kill you in the process by damaging your cardiovascular system. As it was known that these chemotherapeutic side effects were exactly like damage generated during coronary artery disease, I wondered whether I could create a mechanism to target both of these problems. At the same time I was researching these two similar conditions, I was exposed to a unique enzyme called telomerase, while in high school biology. Telomerase is conventionally regarded as an anti-aging related protein. Understanding that coronary artery disease was an aging related disease and strongly associated with the negative side effects of chemotherapy, I wondered whether telomerase, an anti-aging related protein, could be used as a therapeutic to solve both coronary artery disease and chemotherapeutic induced vascular detriment. However, before I was able to conduct the research, I needed some lab space. I don't think my parents would be too happy about me conducting research on our kitchen countertop. <laughs> In order for me to continue with my high aspirations, I reached out to countless professors and scientists at local universities and research institutions. Although I received numerous rejections, one professor decided to take a chance and mentor me. Being so young and not having my driver's license, my mom would drive me every day just so I could learn and conduct experiments. Oftentimes, the experiments would run late, and she would have to wait sometimes countless hours. But through her sacrifice, I was able to successfully conduct the research. In a matter of hours, blood vessels, which have had coronary artery disease or chemotherapeutic treatment, are made to look healthy again just by overexpression of this one protein. The ability of blood vessels to expand and constrict is severely limited under disease conditions, as well as plagued with harmful molecules. Yet, when a telomerase activator is given, the vessels mimic healthy, non-disease vessels. In essence, this data suggests that telomerase may be a revolutionary multi-disease therapeutic that has the capability of mitigating the effects of major cardiovascular detriments and chemotherapeutic side effects, problems which millions of people face worldwide. Conventionally, telomerase is known to extend the lengths of telomeres, the ends of chromosomes, which contributes to its anti-aging related role. However, when the telomeres from diseased and healthy samples were compared, there was no significant difference. The activity of the telomerase protein, on the other hand, was radically reduced in a disease setting. This led me to hypothesize that telomerase must be doing something different, which the research community has not characterized yet, which is contributing to its therapeutic capabilities. The next step of this research investigated this in more detail. Separate from its conventional role within the nucleus, the study showed that telomerase shuttles directly to the mitochondria under a disease state, 
and interacts with a host of other cellular and biological elements, in turn providing the research community with a new insight and perspective on this one protein. However, this experimentation only scratched the surface of what telomerase could be doing in the mitochondria. As the mitochondria is a complicated organelle with thousands of individual components all working in harmony, I wondered if there could be a way to simulate the mitochondrial telomerase interactions without testing them all by hand. In order to accomplish this, I turned to the power of computers. Using computational power, I set out to code a computer simulation of the mitochondria so that one can predict various cellular outcomes without having to conduct wet lab experimentation. However, not having had extensive experience in coding before, I had to teach myself the nature of biology-related computer science before I even started to build the expansive model. The model is able to utilize and predict changes to the concentrations of various enzymes, subenzymatic states, pH, various thermodynamic properties, as well as a host of other variables. In addition to giving myself the opportunity to understand the mitochondrial localization of telomerase in more detail, the model opens the door for work with thousands of other enzymes and other biological components. It allows researchers across the biomedical field to understand the complicated network of the mitochondria with more precision. It truly is a platform technology. However, the most inspiring part of my research journey was that I was able to become a living example of the saying that age is just a number and serve as a source of inspiration for the next generation of doctors, engineers, and scientists. In an age and era where we face numerous amounts of problems on the scientific, social, and political level, we need the help and novel solutions of young and creative individuals. Unfortunately, for as long as the nature of scientific inquiry has existed, the world of science has always been dominated by adults. Although accessibility to conventional scientific education has made tremendous strides in encouraging and including our youth, work has yet to be done to urge the next generation to involve themselves with real and professional science. Science is not just made for the classroom. It is a profession that knows no boundaries and has no age restriction. Who says young, aspiring individuals cannot impact scientific fields, discover revolutionary medicinal treatments to cure our many diseases, or even take us to other celestial bodies? Therefore, we must stop legislation which negatively tampers with STEM education, and instead should keep encouraging our youth to be curious, and allow them to see the world as their one giant laboratory. It is up to us as citizens, charged with the power of democracy and unification, to enact change that allows our next generation to explore their creativity. Two things are true regarding STEM. One, there are tremendous amounts of job openings. And two, there are not enough qualified people to fill these jobs. The technology sector alone employs six million people. However, it is predicted that the United States will suffer a shortage of 230,000 advanced degree STEM occupations. The flow of talent and enthusiastic individuals into the STEM pipeline is rather diminishing. Dramatic change is needed if we are to prevent a weakening of our science sector. The blatant truth is that we have an ever-growing gap within the STEM job sector and are in a dire need of a nationwide commitment to address the challenge. The obvious solution is to involve and prepare our next generation, but we must do this in the right way. We don't want our young generation being involved with science by only reading textbooks and sitting in class in order to prepare for a test covering material they will not likely recall in the future. Instead, education, in addition to providing the necessary academic skills, should serve as a source of inspiration and a platform for students to seek more rigorous and professional opportunities outside of the classroom. As we all know, it is quite difficult to dream about something we have never seen. How can one see themselves as a real professional scientist working in a laboratory if they have never even set foot in a lab before or met a professional scientist? A majority of teenagers nationwide have already voiced that they may be discouraged from pursuing STEM careers simply because they either do not know anyone who works in these fields or they do not understand what people in these fields do. In order to counter this, we need doctors, engineers, and scientists to leave their conventional cubicles, offices, and workspaces which they normally reside in to mentor and teach young creative individuals and truly give them a hands-on look at what STEM is all about. Having been given the opportunity to conduct some of my own research and contribute to a field of science all while only in high school, I am humbled and grateful of the power a mentor-to-student relationship has. Therefore, I urge you all, STEM professional or not, to contribute to this necessary cause. The time to act is now. It is crucial for us to give our support for this initiative 
and recognize the importance of youth in professional STEM-related activities. Thank you.